Hello. Welcome to EasyVB, Tutorial 0. Get started with Visual Basic. In this first video in the EasyVB series, we will explain how to get started, very quickly, to program in Visual Basic. We will also explain about the EasyVB channel, its features, and aims. Visual Basic, or VB, or VB.net, as it is known today, is an events-driven, object-oriented, programming language, by Microsoft. It combines basic programming with objects or controls and is driven by the actions or events on the controls. What this means will become clear after a few tutorials, so don't worry at this point. It is generally used to create Windows Forms applications, which are effectively what you see and use every time you use a Windows PC, for Word, for Excel, for PowerPoint, for any other software you may have acquired, purchased, and use. So, why learn Visual Basic? As there is a whole soup of other programming languages out there, JavaScript, C Sharp, Objective C, Python, and so on. First of all, Visual Basic is very high level. It is very intuitive, reading almost like English, and can be used to make very good GUI applications very quickly. That makes it a great beginner's language. Just to clarify, GUI is an abbreviation of graphical user interface which is just a tech term for where you interact with your PC using the mouse cursor with icons and other visual indicators. OK. Second reason, the Microsoft environment is effectively built on Visual Basic, so as long as Microsoft is around, Visual Basic will be too. True it is an older language, and Microsoft did attempt to retire it, but it continues to be supported in the VB.NET version, and remains an immensely popular language, with an estimated 15 million professional developers worldwide still using it. The output or product of Visual Basic applications is a Windows executable file, a .exe file, and that can be shared on, and will run on, any other Windows PC, without the other PC having any specific Visual Basic software installed on it. As a first exercise, we will go ahead soon in this tutorial and make your very first Visual Basic project. It will take only minutes. But first, a little more about the EasyVB channel. The channel has three categories of video, in different themed colors. The red themed videos are the tutorial series. Intended for beginners, the tutorial series aims to build from a base of no knowledge. With short and simple examples, clearly and fully explained, beginners will become comfortable and confident with the language and quickly attain at least a hobbyist level of competence. The blue themed videos are the tips and tricks series. These are aimed at those who have already started their code learning journey, and even those already quite experienced. In this series the objective is to provide some tips, tricks, useful code snippets, solutions, and workarounds. The sort of information not generally covered in textbooks and time consuming to research answers for. Finally, the green themed videos are the project series. The project series are longer duration videos covering fully the development of some useful applications. The projects can be used as a basis or reference to adapt to the development of other applications with requirements in common. These three categories of video, form a resource and reference space, that can be returned to at any time, to refresh learning, or aid the development of new projects. OK. That's enough about the EasyVB channel. You, want to get started. So, as Visual Basic is a Microsoft language, the first thing you will need is a Windows PC. Next, to create Visual Basic applications, you must use the IDE, which is the Integrated Development Environment. What is that? Well that is just another tech term for the software you use to write the code, lay out the controls, test the application, and so on. For Visual Basic, the IDE is Visual Studio. It's a great and free to download software from Microsoft. Click the link in this video to go to the Microsoft download page and then follow the download instructions to download and install Visual Studio on your PC. If you are not finding it by this link, then search from your internet browser, and you should get to it. Note that, the free version of Visual Studio is known as, Visual Studio, Community. OK. Now what we are going to do is open up Visual Studio and then create your first Visual Basic Windows Forms application. Under the New Project heading, go to Create New Project, and click it. The New Project window will pop up. Go up to the tab, Installed, and click it. Then click the tab, Visual Basic. 
Then pan to the right and click Windows Forms app. Go to the bottom of the window and click in the name text field. Change the name from Windows App 1 to My First VB Project or another name if you prefer. Note that as you type, the solution name also changes. Go to the Location field and browse for the location where you want to save your project. Click Select Folder. Later you can open your project directly from the saved location. Pan over to the right and click OK. A form will now pop up called Form 1, and on the right there will be two windows, Solution Explorer, and Properties, populated with information. Congratulations, you just made your first Visual Basic application. If you do not see the Solution Explorer and Properties menus, this can be resolved easily. Go to the top menu and click the View tab. Find Solution Explorer and click it. Go to View again and scroll down the menu list to find Properties, and click that too. Click once on the form. We should now see the Solution Explorer and Properties menus on the right of the screen. Now click on the form and go up to the View tab. Click it. Then click Code. Two lines of code will pop up, Public Class Form 1, and End Class, with a blank line between. This is the initiation code of the application, and generally all code we write will be between these lines. Go over to Start, and click Start to run the application. The form pops up. It does not do anything yet, because we have not written any code, and we have not added any controls objects to the form. But this is your first Windows application running. We can drag the form around the screen, change its size, minimize it, maximize it, and close it, just like most Windows applications. OK. What we are looking at is the IDE, mentioned earlier. There are a bewildering array of menu options. Don't worry about that, we will learn how to use some of these as we go forward in the course. At this point, we will just take a quick tour of some of the IDE menus, we will use a whole lot. First, we can see that we have two tabs open, name Form 1, VB, and Form 1, VB Design. We will spend a lot of time just toggling between these two views, the Code view, and the Form view. Click on Form 1 VB Design, and then click on the Form. Go up to, View, click that, then scroll down to Find Toolbox. Click the Toolbox and a new menu, Toolbox, should appear on the left. The Toolbox is where we will select the controls objects to place on the Form. So, do that one time now. Click on Common Controls. Find, Button, and click that. Then go over to the Form and click on the Form. Our Form now has a button. We can drag the button around to position it, and drag it out to a larger size or shrink the size. Click on the button and go over to the Properties menu. We can see that our button name, Button 1, is displayed. And there is a whole list of properties associated with the button, its size, position, color, and so on. We can edit these properties here, but we won't do that now, as we will get into that later in the tutorial series. At the top of the Properties menu, there are two important icons. One is the Spanner tool, which is for the button properties we just mentioned. Beside that, there is the Lightning Bolt icon, which is for the button events. An event is just an action on the control, in this case the button, and there are various events, such as the click event, and others that can be selected. We will toggle between these two icons and use their menus a whole lot when writing Visual Basic code. So that is five areas to be familiar with just to start and get going with Visual Basic. The form view, the code view, the toolbox, the properties, and the events. Run the application once more, just to see it with the button. We can click the button but nothing happens as we still have no code or events. Close the application. Now we will save our first Visual Basic project. To do that, go to the File menu, and click Save All. Remaining in the File menu, click Close Solution. Then close down the Visual Studio IDE completely. To reopen the project, go to File Explorer, and find the Solution folder. Open that up, 
then double click the solution file with extension .sln. This will reopen the Visual Studio IDE and the project. If the project form and code do not appear, then just go over to Solution Explorer, double click on form 1.vb. The form should pop up. Click on the form, then go to view and click code, as we did before. Before closing the project again, we suggest to be kind to your eyes, by adjusting the Visual Studio default color, from this bright white background. It is a matter of preference of course, but we suggest to select the dark setting. To do that, go to, Tools, at the top menu bar, click Tools, scroll down to Options, and click Options. A new window will pop up. Go across to Color Theme where it says, Light. Click the down arrow and select dark from the four options. Click OK. The form itself is still bright, but overall we believe the dark theme of Visual Studio will be more comfortable on the eyes, during what may be, many hours of code writing. OK. That is all the coding we will do today. You should be ready now to start with the next tutorials. Don't worry if you don't understand it completely at first. You will pick it up and build confidence very quickly. By tutorial 11 in the EZVB series, you will be able to build this simple on-screen keyboard, without much difficulty at all. Thanks for watching. We hope this tutorial was useful. If it helped you, please like, share, and subscribe.